Hello everybody, Kip T-Sword here with Chronicles of a Culture Changer from DT4 EMS. And what I'm going to do today is we're going to draw a parallel between a Chihuahua, a Rottweiler, and uh, some of the way that, that people act on uh, scenes when it comes to the use of force in emergency medicine. And so just to help sure, make sure everybody's on the same page here, we've got the wonderful little Chihuahua and we've got the wonderful Roddy. Now, most people can immediately recognize the Chihuahua here is the dog that likes to talk a lot of trash. You know, the whole yipe, 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 and then shiver, shiver, yipe, yipe, and then reaches out and nips someone. And then the difference between that and the Rottweiler is the Roddy doesn't have much to say. He's known as notoriously a silent dog. Doesn't, doesn't talk much, waits until the burglar comes into the house, and then just doesn't let him out. He just goes ahead and takes care of business without a lot of trash talk. And so the reason I want to bring these up is you can probably be pretty familiar with these behaviors if you think about how people act in, uh, in, in the emergency setting or when they're talking about the use of force. And what I mean by that is you've got the, uh, the guy around the job or the female around the job. It really doesn't matter from what I've seen in emergency medicine. They're always talking trash about how they would use force. You know, the whole yipe, 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 yipe. And then when it comes to doing something, they usually wait for somebody else to get involved. That's whenever they, they back up or they jump in, whenever they have a pack mentality, there's a whole bunch of them. And then you can also immediately recognize there's a quiet strength to some of the people that you've worked around. That these people don't have anything to say. They don't brag about their use of force. They don't brag about how many fights they've been in. They don't brag about how you know they had to take custody of somebody. This person here doesn't have a lot of trash talk. They just do what needs to be done and they handle it normally with a humble strength. So if you think about some of the people that you work around, and if you, you know, think about it, you've, you've seen that person here that acts like the Chihuahua, talks a bunch of smack in the break room or back at the station about how many fights they've been in and yada, yada, yada. And what's funny about it is the people that talk the most trash are usually the ones that can't back it up. What we find is that the person that should make you the most nervous about their use of force, it is even in my experience as a police officer, it's that person that normally is standing around smiling, shaking hands with people. They're the ones that we recognize immediately and go, you know what, that's the one that I really hate to have to tangle with if I needed to. So we have to be careful about this whenever you look at it like this. So here's the thing that's interesting. When I was training to be a canine handler, uh, a statement that uh, uh, the, the trainer taught me stood out to me and I had no idea how much it was going to be relevant today, which is you can teach a nice dog to be mean. You can never teach a mean dog to be nice. And I thought that was very interesting because what that meant was, you know, if you've got this person who is, they're just genuinely mean. Um, we can't make those people nice. They they, they can fake it, but then it, it, it's even worse than if they would have just been mean to begin with because then everybody could have seen them for base value. The thing about medicine is the overwhelming majority of people that we have on the job are genuinely nice people. We got Got into this job because we wanted to help people. We didn't get into this job to be uh, fighting with anyone. That wasn't why we became EMTs, paramedics, nurses, you know, firefighter on the medical scene. We did this because we want to help folks. Uh, but because of the way we've been treated, it sometimes has forced people to become jaded. And unfortunately, because some people don't understand how the Roddy responds, they end up acting like the Chihuahua and making themselves and everybody else around them look bad. And so it starts causing this jaded culture and then it causes us to lose some neutrality because they're doing all the yipe, yipe, yipe. And a real Roddy, if you didn't recognize that you were dealing with a Roddy and you're doing all this yipe, yipe, yipe and I'm about what you're gonna do, that's when this Roddy turns around and bites you and these others that are around you. So the whole lesson here is I'm asking the providers to start you know, acting more like the Roddy, not the Chihuahua. We don't talk a bunch of trash. If you need to do something, you do it, but you handle it professionally. You don't go any further than what you need to. And when it comes to the use of force, the quickest thing that I can share with you is how much water does a fireman put on a fire? Just enough to put it out, right? They don't drown the house. They don't waste a bunch of water. And then they also don't put on too little. They would use just the right amount to put it out. And that's how you need to look at the use of force. Guys, be that nice dog. Uh, be, be, the, be the Roddy that's nice, that loves everybody. But man, if somebody was, was to hurt you or hurt your family, that's when you would take the bite. Not before. You don't talk all the trash ahead of time just because somebody walks by your yard. That is my friends, is the Chihuahua. So that's what we can learn from the Chihuahua, the Rodney, and how to use force in emergency medicine. Until next time, I'm Kip T. Sort with Chronicles of a Culture Changer, and we'll see you soon.